So, Sharma, you know, the Beetham Wastewater Treatment Plant is on the verge of collapse. It was in the front page of yesterday's Guardian. And we saw that as our biggest sewage treatment plant built 10 years ago, it's not functioning and it's dumping into the Karani Swamp uh, and it's dumping waste over there. What are your short-term plans to deal with this? Well, you know, we can't continue to blame game, but it's really sad that a government uh, that had so much money wasted and did not treat with such an important area. Um, already, when it was drawn to our attention a couple of days ago, we started the process of looking at short-term measures in the first instance, and the experts have been there. They have done an assessment, and some work has started. Um, but certainly, um, you would have also seen the story indicated that uh, as a minimum of $200 million would be required to correct the uh, problem, and that is being looked into. Um, it's a very sad development, one that threatens the life of not just human beings, but uh, the life that surrounds that community as well. And um, we hope to have it rectified in the shortest possible time. Um, we do not know the, the extent of the um, work that is required um, in the long term as well, because uh, short term is to make sure we prevent um, the flu from getting into areas that it should not. Um, but we would have it corrected in, in a short space of time. Okay. What is the role of um, SwimCall, the solid waste Swimcall management has a company? Largely a management role in that they're responsible for the uh, BTAM dump and the uh, uh, Claxon Bay dump. And uh, certainly, um, solid waste um, covers all the waste in the country, including what is now called white waste. And uh, there has been a concern of uh, electrical items getting into the system and destroying the environment. And so, so we have to approach it in a more scientific way. Um, they have been doing very good work, but again. Of late, there's been so much garbage being piling up all over the place. They have had to extend their work hours. Um, during the Clean and Beautify program, we took into the garbage dumps hundreds of uh, truckloads of uh, garbage from all over the country, and still there's so much more to go. Simcal has been doing. Um, we also have to find ways. In many countries, um, they have been able to convert garbage into um, useful resources, and we're exploring that. We're looking at the Canadian model. We're also looking at uh, recently the Minister of um, the Environment, Dr. Rudal Manilal, visited a site in New York. And we'll be trying to get some of the best practices available to us to make sure that we find ways to um, make sure it becomes profitable for those who are also involved in it. This way, um, people would find the plastics, for instance. Right now, there's no financial returns. Um, even with the glass bottles, I was uh, hoping that the glass bottles, I know there's a, a couple of cents per bottle. So we are making sure we're starting to move into the area where persons can be compensated so they would not throw it into the dump areas, into the rivers, into the water courses. And that's going to come very soon. I believe there is a beverage bill. It's been around for yes, 10 years and right. it's been gathering dust. Yeah. We are going to be working on that and hopefully um, even before the beverage bill comes out already, corporate citizens are responding. In fact, I think Republic Bank only today started a, a plastic collection both in San Fernando and in Point Fortin. And we trust that more corporate citizens will get in. At the end of the day, uh, I made the point earlier that in the environment concerns all of us and we all need to be in partnership with this. This is the country we live in and uh, more and more countries are realizing that they have to get the citizens involved and we are going in that direction as well. I think your government has also inti um, intimated that there is going to be a national integrated waste management system plan. That's correct. Is that coming about and when is it going to happen? Well, uh, the question is really finding the funding. Um, uh, and the budget is out in a few days. And certainly once the money has come, we'd start the process. Um, even if we start it in a very initial way and that we start capturing. Just the butters going down the, the waterways would be a uh, massive um, change of water things now and the, the glass bottles as well. So we are starting that process almost immediately. At all our regional corporations, we're going to start that process. And perhaps um, by the next council meeting, there will be some determination how to proceed. But environmentalists are saying that we need the laws now. We need the beverage bill passed. Yes. We need a waste and management. We, we, we agree bill. with them, but that, do, that doesn't give anybody license to dump plastic or anything into the waterways. Um, the garbage disposal system must work. Um, the, the laws will only assist it. Um, there must be a call by every citizen to, to decide, I am going to dispose of my waste in the manner in which it should be done. So glass bottles should go in a particular place, um, plastic bottles should go in a particular place, recyclable material should go in a particular place. And we have to start doing that. In most countries, it's not only the law. It also calls on people, if you live in a particular place, that you must protect it as well. So we are appealing to citizens that 
yes, the state has a responsibility, and citizens also have a responsibility, and there must be a marriage. I think everybody has been saying, we want this to happen, but there's no enforcement. How can your government ensure that even if the laws are in place, that they will be enforced, that people are well, strict about littering? That will, that will come. You know, the first thing is appeal. You really, you don't want to have a police after every wrong um, that can be committed. You want people, you want the school systems to get involved. We are going to go to the schools. The Minister of Education has given a commitment that the school kids would be informed and they will encourage their parents. We, we must start doing what is right. Once that process um, obtains um, guidance and blessings from people, then there will be less policing required. You, you cannot police everything. In the United States, the, the appeal is not just on policing. It's not on punishment. It's really saying, listen, we've got to save the planet. Um, more and more uh, international organizations are responded and they make any call. A uh, number of church groups are getting involved. We have found uh, with the Clean and Beautify program, there were in excess of 300 groups coming, CBOs, faith-based organizations, sports groups, business people. They want to be part of it. They, uh, for a long time, there was a disconnect between government and the people in Trinidad and Tobago. We are reconnecting. People are now realizing this, and they're in partnership with the government that is working for the people. And every citizen has a role to play, and every citizen is going to benefit from the rewards of the good work. So people are now getting on stream. Uh, we started this uh, program to make sure that in the event of a disaster, there's some help available. And uh, today we did two, one in Cuba and one in San Fernando. People are responding. People are coming out, and we want to encourage that more and more. Okay. Well, we need to take a short break. Once again, we remind you to send in your comments and photographs to cleaninguptthemess at guardian.co.tt. We'll be right back with more on this environmental series on CNC3.